afternoon everybody my name is Andrew Crotty and today we're going to be talking about the Fair Important Practices Principles or FIPPS. Uh, this is going to be going over a uh, collection of limitation principles uh, which is going to be helping out showing explaining the collection of personal data any such data that should be obtained by lawful or fair means when appropriate with the knowledge or consent of data subject. So some of the objectives that we're going to be hitting over for this are describing your understanding of FIPPS to include transparency, individual participation, purpose specifications, data minimization, use limitation, data quality and integrity, security, accountability, and auditing. Explain how FIPPS compares to other privacy policies, laws, and regulations, and describe how FIPPS can use, be useful in protecting personal identifiable information and how a federal agency can put each of those principles to use. So first off, what is FIPPS? So this is, provides a framework for privacy policies and they ensure that personal information is collected and used for specific limited purposes that is accurate and secure. This also ensures that those who are collecting and using this personal data are held accountable for what they are collecting and actually using to include of what's being collected and also audits that are being done to implement and make sure the F by PPS is being followed by these organizations. So this could be the restaurant that's uh, taking your, your credit card information for payment. This could be a subscription site for a website or magazine uh, where you're putting in your personal information, any kind of PII, home address, billing information, um, and what exactly that organization or group is allowed to actually hold on to, maintain, collect uh, for data purposes as well, and uh, reuse and selling. So some other additional things to always keep in mind are the collection limitation principle, the data quality principle, the purpose uh, specification principle, use of limitation, security safeguard principle, the openness principle, individual participation, uh, participation principle, and the accountability principle. For the collection principle, this should limit, uh, be limited to collections of personal data, such as anything obtained by lawful fair means. For the data quality, this is anything that be relevant for the purpose of which they are being used and the extent necessary for those purposes. Should be accurate, complete, and kept up to date. For the purpose specifications, this is something which personal data are collected should be specific not later than at the time of data collected and the subsequent use limited to the fulfillment of those purposes and such other not um, incomparable to the purposes that are being specified of each occasion and chance of purpose. Use of limitation principle is personal data should be should not be disclosed, made available, or otherwise used for purposes other than those specified except with the consent of the data subject or by authority of law. Security safeguarding principle, personal data should be protected by reasonable security safeguards and such risks at loss or unauthorized access, destruction, use, modifications, or disclosure of data. Open principle, there should be a general policy of openness about the developments, practices of policies, and respect for personal data. Means should be relatively available for establishing the existence and nature of personal data and the main purpose of their use. Individual participation principle is an individual should have the right to obtain that data control or otherwise confirm or other or not to that data control. And then eight, the last one for the accountability principle, data controllers should be accountable for complying and measuring which gives effect to the principle stated above. So accountability would fall under your audits, making sure that that's actually being tracked, maintained, and kept aware of. How FIPPS compares with other privacy policies, laws, and regulations. You could compare this to um, such things such as HIPAA, which also uh, is a lot is used by most hospitals to protect your information from uh, outside sources trying to obtain that. Um, in comparison, once again, you have laws and regulations uh, that as FIPS are much more broader in scope. Um, some policies tend to be more specific in terms of how they're being applied. An example of one policy might be the use of a company as a way to keep all of their employees' compensation confidential, so hiding salaries or not making sure those are not being frequently shared. Um, another example would be a law firm trying to keep their clients' legal matters confidential. We don't want that stuff being just leaked out to the public to where anyone and everyone would have access to it. Protect privacy, so it's always nice to always keep in mind that FIPPS, the importance is that we want to make sure that this pro uh, 
the privacy of individuals is protected. Um, so if information is either hacked, obtained, leaked, deleted, um, it's having that accountability, one, that they're being held to that standard to make sure that it's transparent and to make sure that individuals have a way and say of how their information is being used. This also helps protect the privacy of individuals and builds trust of those individuals and organizations that collect the personal information. So thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate your guys' time, and I will catch you guys next week.